Um, we continue reviewing Gauss algebra, uh, finding inverse of one-to-one -one function. So uh, only one-to-one -one function has inverse. Uh, so to find inverse, there are a few steps uh, that we need to do. The most important things is to interchange uh, x and y. And after that, we solve for y. So these two are important steps. Uh, the other two is to replace the f of x. by y and after that uh, we replace y by the inverse notation for the inverse I'll replace this into All right All right so first uh, we just did this f of x we write that as y and after that uh, so that's the first step uh, replace x and y so x into y and y into x and this will be 3 sorry right. now uh, this to eliminate a fraction, I can write this over 1 and cross multiply. So we have 3x equal to ay plus 5. And now we just solve for y. Uh, I will minus 5 on both sides. So we have 3x minus 5 equal to a y and then divide by 8 on both sides we have 3x minus 5 over 8 equal to y and finally we just get the notation to work I replace f of negative x into y so this y becomes f inverse of x and then we have 3x minus 5 over 8 Right, so that's the first one. Uh, next, we'll do the same thing. Uh, cube root of x minus 3. Uh, so, uh, first, we'll replace f of x by y. And then, into chain x and y, y becomes x. And x becomes y. And then we solve for y. How uh, to solve for y? Uh, we will keep both sides. And when we keep both sides, we don't need to uh, check the answer. Only square. So we just have x cubed. Uh, because cube root is not an even root, so we don't need to check the answer. So that x cubed equal to y minus 3. And then just plus 3 on both sides. Uh, so we have x cubed minus 3 equal to y. And then the notation for the inverse is f inverse of x equal to x cubed minus the weak plus 3 sorry so x inverse plus 3 so that's what we have right. uh, next uh, graph the function at the solid line and the inverse as a dashed line in the coin system. So this is the function. Right, so we're going to graph it first. Uh, 
So x squared minus 1, it is the parabola open up and uh, go down one unit from the x squared. Uh, so go down one unit, so it looks like this. However, this one is only uh, for x squared and equal to 1. So this is very important. Because of that, we only have this range. So that is the graph of f of x. And we don't have this other sign. Now let's try the inverse. Uh, we have f of x, e x uh, f of x equal x squared minus one. Uh, replace this by y, uh, so we have y equal to x squared minus one. And as I mentioned before, the condition is important, so we're just going to write x squared and equal to zero. Now we interchange x and y. Y becomes x x becomes y and then we'll just solve for y so plus one on both sides so we have x plus one equal to y square and then uh, to get y by itself we will take the square root but when we do that we have to put, put the plus or minus on one side uh, so, I'm going to put the plus and minus on this side. And uh, so we have that. Uh, so we have y equal to uh, plus or minus square root of x plus 1. All right. So, uh, there's a problem here. Uh, there's a problem here. Uh, it could be a plus or minus. It cannot be a function if there's a plus or minus there. So, we have to choose. Uh, luckily, uh, the problem, this tells us x is greater than or equal to 0. So, when we interchange x and y, we have to do that to the condition as well. Uh, so, that gives us y greater than or equal to 0. Now, if y is greater than or equal to 0, then we have to choose the plus sign. Uh, so the notation uh, for inverse is f inverse of x uh, will be equal to uh, square root of x plus 1. Right. And square root of x plus 1 is the graph of the square root that go 1 unit to the left. Uh, so it will be and you want that in the dashed line so this is the graph of the inverse I should say y equal to right. and um, the graph of the function and the inverse is symmetric on the line uh, y equal to x. So if we draw the line y equal to x, the graph of the function and the inverse isometric on the line y equal to x. Uh, so uh, we also uh, confirm that. Uh, next we have distance. Distance formulas, midpoint, and then the circle. Oh, didn't finish the last uh, part of the question. Uh, also, they said use interval notation to give the domain and uh, the range. Right. <clears throat> so, we're going to write uh, domain of the function. 
and uh, because we interchange x and y, the domain of the function is the range of the inverse. And the domain of the function f is going to be x squared not equal to 0. Interval notation will be from 0 to infinity. And once again, <coughs> we understand x and y, uh, so the range of the function is the domain of the inverse. And uh, so the range of the function will go from negative 1 and up. Or we will write negative 1 to infinity. Uh, notice this is, should be a bracket because uh, it has the equal sign. Right. Uh, next we have the midpoint. I mean distant formula, midpoint and then equation with circle. I only do one of them because that's fairly simple. Uh, the distant formula square root of x2 minus x1 square plus y2 minus y1 square uh, so pretty much uh, we have x1 y1 and x2 y2 Uh, so, <clears throat> so just put in the form uh, x2 is 6 minus x1 2 square plus y2 minus y1 square. Uh, so we have that is 4 square. And uh, negative 3 plus 5, so that's just 2 square. So that is a square root of 20. A square of 20. Uh, if we break uh, 20, is 2 times 10, and then 2 times uh, 5. So 20 is 2 square times 5. If we want the square root, uh, we're going to have uh, 2 square root of 5. And now we have the midpoint. Uh, the midpoint is pretty much the point in the middle, obviously. Uh, so we have the average, the average of the x values, and the average of the y values. Uh, so uh, we can choose either one. We can choose this one, x1, y1, or x2, y2. Just and the other one is x2, y2. Uh, so we're going to have uh, 4 plus 5 divided by 2 and 6 plus 1 divided by 2. Uh, so that's 9 halves and 7 halves. Now, uh, equation of a circle. Uh, so I'll write the equation of a circle first. So this is a distant formula. The 
distance formula uh, midpoint and then equation with circle distance yeah so that's too simple so I let you do that one and this is the midpoint and then equation with circle x minus a square, y minus k square, equal to r square, uh, where we have the center, uh, h and k, and the radius is r. Right. Uh, so in our problem, uh, we have the center at negative a and eight, and the radius equal to 5, so h is negative 8, k is 8, and r is 5. Uh, so we just put in uh, the equation of a circle, so x minus a negative 8 square uh, plus y minus k square equal to r uh, square uh, so that gives us x plus a square plus y minus a square equal to 25 uh, so that's the equation of a circle uh, next we have a, also equation of a circle uh, but on this question, we asked to find, uh, to graph uh, the equation. So, uh, to graph the equation, uh, we have to find the center and the radius. And so we compare this to the equation of a circle. Uh, so, I'm going to write the equation of a circle right below it. x minus h, y minus k, square equal to uh, 16, equal to r square. So uh, from here we have h must be equal to 4. Notice that if this is a plus 4, then we have to have negative 4. So in the formula, the, it is x minus h and then y minus k in this case uh, k is equal to 2 and the radius square is equal to 16 <coughs> uh, so from here take the square root on both sides are uh, equal to 4 we don't have the minus 4 because the radius cannot be negative so that's all we can have right uh, so center is at uh, from here uh, we can get the center is 4 and 2 and the radius is 4 so 4 and 2 and the radius is uh, we go pretty much 4 unit up and 4 unit down and left and right. Then we're just going to draw the circle. Might be useful if you just draw the box or a square. And so the circle will be inside that box. because it's four unit up and four unit down so there's a little off here
It's about that. Uh, so again, the center is four and two. And we go four up, four down, two, four left, four right. Uh, so in that case, uh, we can write the domain and range uh, for the graph. Uh, so the domain, uh, the x values, uh, from four we go four left, four right. Uh, so that would be from zero to eight. And it including the point, so it should be a bracket. Zero to eight. And then the range uh, from negative two to six. Again, should be a bracket. So that was that. Right. And now we go to the quadratic uh, equation, quadratic function and application. Uh, so we will have uh, the axis symmetry on this one and then the vertex on the next one. So both of them have some similarity. It's just uh, the x coordinate of the vertex is the same as the equation of the symmetry given by negative b over 2a. And if we need the y values, it's just whatever the values of the function at that point. All right. So uh, from here, useful to write a is negative 1, b is 2, and c is negative 6. So uh, as of symmetry, will be just x equal to negative b over 2a so negative 2 over 2a so we have negative 2 over negative 2 uh, so that is just x equal to 1 so the axial symmetry is the equation x equal to a constant and in this case uh, x equal to 1 All right uh, so that is that one All right. uh, so useful to just write a is 1 b is negative 10 and c is negative 7 First, it's x equal to negative b over 2a. Uh, so we will have negative b over 2a. Uh, so negative and negative, so that 10 over 2 is 5. So x corner is 5. Uh, now we go to y corner. Uh, the y corner is just where we're going to put x uh, into the function at 5. So 5 square minus 10 times 5 minus 7. All right, so that is 25 minus 50 is minus 25 minus 7, so minus 32. So the vertex is a point where the coordinate is x equal to 5, y equal to negative 32. All right. Uh, next, <clears throat> uh, determine if the function has a maximum or minimum, and then if it is, find the maximum and minimum. Uh, so pretty much, uh, we just find the vertex. On this one, just write a coefficient. Uh, 
uh, so uh, since a is negative and it is less than zero uh, so the graph will open down parabola open down and therefore uh, that we have uh, the maximum right I should say the maximum is at the vertex right. so first x equal to negative b over 2a negative b over 2a so there are three negative signs here uh, so that gonna give us negative 1 and then y is the values of the function at negative 1 uh, so we put negative 1 negative negative 1 square minus 2 times negative 1 uh, minus 8 so that is minus 1 plus 2 minus 8 so minus 7 uh, so from here we have the vertex is x equal to negative 1 and negative 7 and that is going to be the maximum Uh, next one, uh, same thing. I will write down all the coefficient. A equal to 4. Uh, B equal to negative 12. Actually, we don't need to write C. But uh, it is equal to 0 in this case. Right. Uh, so A is less than 0. I mean A is positive. So it opened up. And there is the lowest point. <coughs> uh, so it's open up, so there's a minimum. So we say the minimum is at the vertex. Right. And we do the same thing. X equal to negative B over 2A. Negative. B over 2A. Uh, so that is 12 over 8. Uh, that will reduce to 3 halves. Divide by 4. So 3 halves. And then Y is the function values at that point. Uh, so it's useful to know how to do this on the calculator so that we set up calculation. This will be easy. Uh, so we have a calculator here. Sorry, let me do that again. I'm just going to put that there. Right. Uh, so we first we store the values into x. Uh, it's so 3 halves. So 3 divided by 2. Hit the store key into x. And then we just have the function for x squared minus 12x. And we have negative 9. Uh, so we have the point 3 half and negative 9 and this is the minimum so uh, pretty much what we have is where the coefficient a uh, is positive the parabola open up and when it's negative 
the bra will open down. Uh, next we have an application, but pretty much uh, it's the same thing. So uh, we have the equation, uh, an arrow is shot into the air and with all the information. Uh, so we have the height and it's in feet and t is the time in second. After it was shot, and the equation is this, I find the maximum height. Uh, so the maximum height, which is the h, not the x. And I think the question has a typo here. Supposed to be t. Here, All right. So uh, we have this function, and uh, that is quadratic function. A equal to negative sixteen and b is equal to 96 and since a is less than 0 the graph open down and it makes sense that we will have the maximum at the vertex so max is at the vertex so have the equation x equal to negative b over 2a negative b over 2a so 96 over negative negative so that cancel out uh, 96 over 32 uh, so that will be 3 and again, there's no x, there's only t. So that will be 3. Uh, so what it means is that after 3 seconds, the arrow is at the highest point. The maximum height is at 3 seconds after it is shot. Uh, so we will write the height is equal to pretty much the function. three that's not very good notation though anyway so that would be negative 16 times 3 square plus 96 times 3 All right uh, we see we have the calculator there uh, we'll just say 3 uh, start to x and then we just have the equation negative 16 x square plus 96 x and we have 144 so h is the height and the maximum height is 144 uh, so we say the maximum height is 144 feet Uh, next we have uh, an application problem uh, a developer want to build a parking lot next to a grassy lot that border city street that's what I mean so we have the city street so I say that is street and then I'll build a parking lot next to it and it is in a rectangular parking lot so it will be like this uh, what we have is 332 feet of fencing So notice that we only built the 
who need to fencing in this on three sides of a rectangle. Uh, so if this is x, this is x, also x, and this will be y. And what we want is to build a parking lot that has the largest, which is the maximum area. Right. So first, from this equation, we have uh, x plus y plus x is 332 feet. Or 2x plus y is 332 Uh, and then to solve for y, we have y equal to 332 minus 2x. Right. Next, what we want is the one with the largest area. Uh, the area is going to be equal to x times y. Uh, length time width so a equal to x times y uh, we need to write this in terms of just one variable so y equal to 332 minus 2x I shall multiply out 332x minus 2x squared Right. Uh, so this is a quadratic equation. Uh, a equal to negative two. Remember the coefficient of x y is a, and the coefficient of x is b. Uh, so we have uh, a is negative. So the graph open down and the vertex is max. Right. So to find the vertex and that will be the maximum x equal to negative b over 2a. Negative b over 2a so that is uh, 332 divided by 4 so we have a calculator we just use it that's 83 right. so the x is equal to 83 And then the y values, if we substitute in here, we certainly can get the y values. And that is 166. And if we want the area, we just take x times y to get the area. Or if we want to, we just put it into this function. So the area is equal to 332 x minus 2 times 80 x squared. Uh, so 83 stone to x. And then uh, 332 x square minus, sorry, 232 x minus x square. Uh, okay. I guess it 2 x square.
13,778 uh, axis 83 feet, y 166 feet, multiply together the unit for the area be uh, square feet. Uh, next we have uh, we use the leading coefficient test to determine the end behavior uh, so the end behavior so it will depends on who write out what we need uh, the highest power terms not the leading term but just whatever the one with the highest power say so we have a sub n x to the n power so the, the term we have two things the coefficient and the degree degree which is the highest power of the polynomial uh, so if we have a sub n when it's positive uh, the right end go up And when it's negative, uh, the right end go down. So that only for the right. Now for the left, there's no uh, direct uh, formula. Uh, but what we can use is this. We will look at the degree. If it's n, the degree uh, is even. then we have the same behaviors on both ends so the same behaviors if n is odd it will be opposite behaviors right. so uh, from the polynomial we take the highest power terms will be this one and the coefficient is 4 so coefficient is equal to 4 which is positive so the right end go up and then on to the degree coefficient it is 4 and the degree is the power is 4 which is even uh, even uh, we will have the same behavior uh, the same behavior on both ends I'm just going to write the same behaviors now if the right end go up and it have the same behaviors on both ends, uh, this means uh, the left is also up. Uh, so we say uh, the function uh, rises uh, to the left that go up and rises to the right. Because both sides go up. Right, next. Uh, we have the highest power terms here. Negative 3 x cubed. Uh, so the coefficient and the degree. Uh, coefficient is negative 3, which is negative. And if it's negative, the right end will go down. And then the degree uh, the degree is equal to 3 and 3 is odd if it is odd we have the opposite behavior
Now, if the right end goes down, and we have the opposite behaviors on both ends, uh, so one's up, one's down. So if the right's down, uh, the left side uh, must go up. On the way. Uh, so we will say uh, the function uh, rises to the left, the left's up, so rises uh, to the left. And phones to the right. Right. Uh, next, we will have I will find the zeros, multiplicity, and the behavior near the x-axis. Or near the zeros. So just we're going to draw a little table here. Oh, we don't need the calculator, uh, so I put that away for a moment. Uh, so we will have zero multiplicity and the behavior near the x-axis or behavior near the zeros uh, so if we have x we're going to write out all the factors x plus one fifth to the fourth power equal to zero if we have to solve for zero uh, the power here doesn't matter that the only thing that it tells us is that it's going to be the multiplicity. But when we solve for the zero, uh, we don't need that power. So the x plus one fifth equal to zero. Uh, so minus one fifth on both sides. So that is the zero. x equal to negative one fifth. Multiplicity of four, even multiplicity, it will touch the x axis and then turn around. And then we have the auto factor. The power of the factor is the multiplicity. And then we just need to solve for x without that multiplicity. So x minus 9 equal to 0, plus 9 on both sides. x equal to 9. So 0 equal to 9 and multiplicity of 3 it is odd multiplicity uh, so it cross it will cross the x-axis so that's what we have right. uh, next intermediate value uh, theorem So we need to show that there is, it has a real zero between 1 and 2. Right. So we need to do here is evaluate the function at 1 and evaluate the function at 2. If they have the opposite sign, meaning 1 is positive, 1 is negative, then there must be a zero between 1 and 2. Uh, so we're just going to do that. Actually, we need the calculator. Better. Uh, so 1 uh, store into x and then we have a x to the 4th power minus 7 x square minus 2 and that is equal to negative 1 And then we store 2 into x. And if we have the this type of calculator, if we can go up, 
If not, hit the second and then enter. It give us the last entry. But uh, like I said, if we can go up, highlight the equation, hit enter. Let's just copy and paste, and that gives us 98. Now, one negative, one positive. There must be a zero in between one and two. So we just saying here we have the opposite sign. Uh, so there is a zero between one and two. Between this number. Not between those function values, between the x values of 1 and 2. Right. Uh, next, we have synthetic division. Uh, so, the most important thing in synthetic division is that uh, we can only divide by uh, x minus c. So, in here we have x plus 4 is x minus c. Obviously, cancel the x. Uh, we show for c is negative 4. Right. Sorry, I put a calculator on the way. Right. x plus 4 is equal to x minus c. Uh, cancel the x on both sides. c is negative 4. Right. Uh, so first, we're going to write uh, the dividend with a coefficient of negative 2, negative 10, negative 5, and 12 and then the C is negative 4 that is the corner or the horizontal line so first uh, we wrap the coefficient multiply put in the next column and then add multiply Put in the next column that would be 8 and then add multiply put in the next column and then add uh, the last number is the remainder and this is the quotient which equivalent to uh, negative 2x squared negative 2x plus 3 so that is the quotient or if we want to write uh, we say it the dividend is equal to divisor times the quotient plus remainder uh, I'm going to put that here negative 2x cubed minus 10x squared minus 5x plus 12 equal to uh, the divisor times the quotient plus remainder so we can write like that as well but uh, this one is just one the quotient which is that Uh, so that is synthetic division. Uh, synthetic division has uh, two important uh, theorem that go with it: uh, the remainder theorem and the zero factor theorem. Um, what it says is that uh, the remainder is the values of the function. So of course we can just put negative two into x and get the values, but uh, we use uh, synthetic division. So the coefficient two, negative seven, negative five. And 11. Uh, what we substitute here is x values of negative 3, that is actually the c values. Notice that unless we write x minus c, it will just write one number by itself, that number is c. So c is equal to negative 3. So I'm going to wrap uh, numbers there. Multiply, put in the next column, and then add. So 
that is 39. Uh, 39 minus 5 is 34. Uh, negative 3 times 34 is uh, negative 102. Which plus 12 will give us a negative 91. So this is the remainder, obviously. But not only it is the remainder, it is also the values of the function when we put negative 3 into x. So that is the remainder theorem. It says the, uh, the remain is the values of the function. Uh, next, we have the rational zero theorem. Uh, the rational zero theorem uh, will list give us all the possible. Again, this is only possible uh, rational zeros. So, and the theorem says all the possible rational zero. Uh, let me write out the theorem. Possible rational zeros will be equal to uh, the factors of the last one, which is the factor of the constant. All the factors of the constant term over the factors of the linear coefficient, which is in this case 1. And the leading coefficient. Right. So in this particular problem, uh, we will have the factors of a constant. To say factors of negative twelve over all the factors of the leading coefficient is one. Uh, so we have. Uh, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, 3, 4, did not, 6 and 12. Sorry. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. And a factor of 1 is just 1. Right. I should leave more space for that problem. Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 and 12. All right. Now, uh, we take each one of the top divided by each one at the bottom. One divided by one is one. So the possible of rational zeros is plus or minus one. One divided by one, two divided by one, three divided by one, four divided by one, six divided by one, and twelve divided by one. Uh, so that's all we have. Uh, similarly, on the next one, another line here. Uh, all the possible rational zeros again this is only possible will be the factors of the constant 2 And factor of the linear coefficient leading coefficient is seven. Right. So factor of two is plus or minus one or plus or minus two. And factor of seven plus or minus one plus or minus 7. Right. Uh, so we will take each one on the top, divide by each one at the bottom. 1 over 1 is 1. 2 over 1 is 2. 1 over 7 is 1 over 7. And then 2 over 7. 2 over 7. 
So again, uh, the factors of the co-constant, the last one over the factors of the leading coefficient, the first to the last over the first. Right. For this one, we will solve for the polynomial equation. On this one, we will use uh, the possible uh, the rational zero theorem, the one we just use. And that will help us to uh, get the solution. And we gonna help uh, use the calculator uh, to help us to get the first maybe the first two solutions. Right. So uh, first on this one we. I uh, write the possible rational zero. So we factor of uh, the constant, the last one over the factors of the first one, which is the leading coefficients. So factors of negative eighteen. Or over factors of one. Uh, that means uh, factors negative eighteen. So we will have plus one, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus three, plus or minus four and five doesn't work. So six, nine, and eighteen. All over one, so we just have one, two, three, six, nine, and eighteen. Of course, plus or minus. Right now, uh, those are possibles. Uh, so we don't know which one is the actual zero. Uh, we will use the calculator to do to get the first one. Uh, so. I will hit y equal to and enter the function x cube or just x cube plus 2x minus 9x minus 18. Right. And after that, uh, the second equation, I'll, the second function, I will enter 0. Right. So what we do is we will find the intersection of. Uh, the polynomial function and the y equal to zero. So hit second, calculate. Let me put that here. Oh. I forgot to change the title. Sorry. All right. Oops. 13, 14. Let's put that here. Okay, it's fine. Right. Yeah, I think we can just put it there. Again, y equal two, enter the two function, and then second, the two function, one on the left and one on the right. And hit second just one time and then trace. We will calculate the intersection to so option number five. All right, of course, here we could see the intersection, but let's just find it. So we said, what is the first curve? And we say that is this function. So that looked like the first curve, yes. So hit enter. Uh, the second curve is that this function? And we say yes. Hit enter. And then guess. Uh, when we guess, we will move the corner left or right. Uh, when we get close to the solution that we want, so let's find this zero then. So I move the the corner very close to it. When we hit enter, it will snap into place of x equal to three. Right. So x equal to three uh, is a is a zero. Uh, to make sure that it works, uh, we're going to put into the function. But even better, uh, we will use the enteric division. 
1, 2, negative 9, negative 18. And we know 3 is a 0 from the graph. Right. So first, of course, we wrap down the 1, multiply, put in the next column, and then add, multiply, put in the next column, and add, multiply, put in the next column, and then add. This has to be equal to 0 because that will be equal to the values of 3. So 3 is a 0. Now, the nice thing about this is uh, from there we just have the quotient and we just need to work from here. Don't have to start from the beginning. So this is an advantage of uh, using the synthetic division. Not only we confirm that it is a 0, we also reduce the problem into a quadratic equation in this case. Uh, of course, we can do the same thing, but uh, I'll just use quadratic formula. Every time we have two, uh, the second degree, I'll just use quadratic formula. Uh, so, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So, we have negative 5 plus or minus square root of 5 square 25 of 24 so that's over 2 so we have negative 5 plus or minus square root of 1 over 2 uh, so we have negative 5 plus or minus 1 over 2 negative 5 plus 1 over 2 so that negative 4 over 2 is negative 2 and negative 5 minus 1 over 2 is negative 6 over 2 is negative 3 so we have 3 is a 0, negative 2 is a 0 and negative 3 uh, so the solution set negative 2 works, negative 3 and then 3 All right. uh, next I will have similar problem. Write the timestamp. Uh, so we have a uh, polynomial equation. Uh, so first we write the possible rational zeros. Be the factors of the constant over the factors of the leading coefficients. So factors of 2 over factors of 1. Factors of constant over factors of leading coefficient. Uh, so we have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, over plus or minus 1. So that's just 1 and 2, positive and negative, of course. All right, let's see what it actually is. Now we use a calculator. Uh, so enter y equal to let's clear those uh, the function the polynomial function x cubed minus 6x squared plus 7x plus 2 and then the second equation equal to 0 now we're trying to find the intersection of these two functions, 
So second trace calculate number five. And then we see uh, the intersection, right? So uh, that's why we have. That's why we did this problem. So we know the possible solution is uh, one negative one or two or negative two. It is possible. Maybe none of them will work, but it looks like uh, we have to look for the solution around these values. Uh, so look like it's going to be two here. So let's see the first curve. What is the first curve? So that is the function for the first curve. So that's correct. Uh, the second curve, this is the equation, also correct. So when we find a solution, uh, we'll move the corner uh, close to it. And it and, uh, it will snap into place uh, 2. So that's good. We know 2 is a 0. Okay. But then we always have to check to make sure this is actual or zero. The way to check is just do synthetic division and make sure that uh, it is equal to zero. Make sure we have uh, the remainder equal to zero. So we're going to wrap the first one, two. Two times two is four. And that's negative two. Two is negative two is negative four is 3, 2 times 3 is 3. Wait, I don't know why I do that. Drop down the 1. 1 times 2 is 2. That minus 4, and that minus 8. So give us minus 1, 2 times minus 1. Uh, let's just do that again. Sorry. Uh, divide by 2, coefficient of the dividend 1, negative 6, 7, and 2. So wrap down the 1 times 2 is 2, negative 8, negative 1. Negative 2 and 0. So indeed, we have the values of the function is equal to 0, meaning that number is a 0. Right. Uh, so we have x squared minus 4x minus 1. And we just need to work uh, to solve for the quotient equal to 0. Uh, quadratic equation, so we use quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a minus negative 4 plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a uh, so that gives us a plus or minus so that gives us 16 uh, plus 4 so 20 16 for 20 over 2 right. we did Try earlier that uh, square root of 20 is 2 square root of 5. So that's that convenient. All right, so which is 8 plus or minus 2 square root of 5 divided by 2. Now both of them on the top, I can factor out a 2. So we have 4 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. So give us Four plus or minus square root of five. So we have that, and then the two. Uh, so those zeros will be two and uh, four. I don't know why I write the eight here. Sorry, negative, negative. So that is a four. Uh, 
and factor out the two we have two left so two and two plus or minus square root of five sorry that's what we have Uh, next, we do the problem in reverse. Uh, we have the zeros. Now, we just find the polynomial function. Right, so we know the answer. We just need to find um, the question. Right. Uh, so first, we will look for the n degree. So the qubit polynomial. And then we have the zeros. So the zeros are 3 and i. We have a theorem, uh, say, if there's an i, there will have to be the conjugate to that, which is negative i. So if there's i, there will have to be negative i. Uh, so in general, if we have like negative 2, negative 3i is a 0, then negative 2 plus 3i is also a 0. So the one that goes with i, one negative, one positive. So those are called the complex contrary. Right. Now, so those are the zeros because n equal to 3, so we should have three zeros. And then we have uh, the factors. If those are the zero, then x minus those numbers are the factors. x minus 3, x minus i, and x minus negative i. And this one, of course, we can write as x plus i. So we will multiply these factors. Right. But not only that, uh, let's say if we have x equal to 1, x minus 1 equal to 0, so x equal to 1. If we multiply that by a number, this coefficient does not affect the zeros. Uh, the factor itself will determine the zero, not the constant multiplying. Uh, so pretty much we can have anything in front of it. So we just put the linear coefficient there. Right. And that's going to be the function is equal to that. Uh, now uh, we we'll multiply this out. Uh, always multiply the conjugate first because there's something to cancel, something to simplify when we do that x times x, x squared plus i x minus i x minus i squared. And there's the reason we multiply the conjugate first because the middle terms cancel out. We just have x squared. Now negative i square i square is equal to negative one. So negative negative one is a plus one. Now we multiply it out. X cubed plus x minus three x square minus three. I just put this in decreasing order. X cubed my 3x square plus x my 3. All right, so that's good and all, but we need to determine the leading coefficient. But that's all right. We are given f of 2 equal to 25. What it means is that if we put 2 in for x, uh, it should be equal to 25. So I'm going to put... 2 into x, the a n is still there. 2 cubed minus 3 times 3 square plus 3 minus 3. I don't know why I put 2, 3 in. It should be 2. 
multiply. X equal to 2. So 2 cubed, 2 square, 2 minus 3. Actually, use the calculator for that. Uh, again, I will store 2 into X. I just quickly screen uh, 2 store into X. And then we'll just enter the function x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 3. So I get minus 5. Uh, so we have a sub n times minus 5 equal to 25. Uh, so divide by negative 5 on both sides, uh, we have an equal to negative 5. Right. Uh, once we have that, uh, we will put negative 5 back into the function. So fx equal to negative 5 x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 3. Uh, multiply it out negative 5 x cubed. Negative 5 minus 3 is plus 15x squared minus 5x plus 15. Right. So minus 5x cubed plus 15x squared minus 5x plus 15. Right. Uh, once again, uh, when we have a 0, then the x minus that number is a factor. So would mean if x my 3 is a factor, I write it backward. x equal to 3 is a 0. So we see if x my c is a factor, then x equal to c is a 0. Uh, likewise, conversely, if x equal to c is a 0, then x minus c is a factor. So, if x minus c is a factor, then x equal to c is a 0. Or if x equal to c is a 0, then x minus c is a factor. Those are equivalent. Right, uh, next we have uh, the Carlos rule of sine. And for this, we will just count how many times the sine changes. So we just count from negative to positive. That is the one sine change. From positive to negative. That two from negative to positive. That three. So there are three side changes. Of f of x. On f of x. Uh, so. The number of side changes, side changes give us the number of zero, or I should say the number of zeros equal to the number of side changes or less than even numbers. So we say it, a number of positive zeros. It's going to be that number or less by an even number. Less than by an even number, meaning we go to subtract two from it. And we subtract 2 again, unless we cannot do that anymore. So we cannot do that anymore because if we do, we get a negative number. So that's what we have. Right. Next. Uh, so that gives us the positive 0. Uh, for the negative zeros, uh, we have to substitute negative x into x. I mean negative x into x negative x into x 
and negative x into x. Right. Uh, to simplify, we will have negative x to the 9 power, so that's still negative with the negative. So that's 6x to the 9 uh, minus x to the 5th minus that negative x squared, so that x squared with the minus, and then plus 8. And then we'll count one side changes. There's no thing negative, negative, so don't change. There's two. So there's two side changes on f of negative x. So we will give, we will get the number of uh, negative zero. Will be two, or we subtract an even number. So that could be zero, and we could subtract again until we cannot do that anymore. If we take zero, subtract two, we have negative. So we're going to start at zero. Right. Uh, the next one is similar to it. So if we count, there's nothing here positive to positive. So all of them is positive. So there's no sign changes. Zero sign change on the function. Uh, so that gives us the number of uh, positive zero. Is none. We could subtract two, but we cannot. We cannot subtract two anymore because that uh, is smallest possible number right so that is for the positive is the sign changes on the function now for the negative zeros we have to use put negative x into x and we have negative x to the seven power plus negative x to the six plus negative x squared plus four uh, so we will have negative x to the 7 plus x to the 6 plus x square plus 4 did I forgot something? oh, the x so minus x Plus four. Notice that on this problem, on this problem, we will not add the zero for the placeholder. Whatever we get is what we get. Don't put the zero x to the fifth, for instance. Besides, the zero doesn't have a sign. Anyway, uh, so count one negative to positive. This does not change. This changes two and three. Uh, so there will be three uh, sign changes on f of negative x. So the negative sign changes on f of negative x give us the number of negative zero there's three sign changes so we start from three and we subtract an even number until we cannot do that anymore. So if we subtract two, uh, we have one. So on this problem, we have no positive zeros and uh, three or one negative zeros. And uh, this term will be helpful. For example, if we have to list, uh, have to check which one uh, is a zero by doing this we can say that there's no negative zero. So we're not going to check any negative zero if that's uh, what we have. But um, again, the number of side changes or less than by an even number give us the number of positive zero. And then we'll do f of negative x. That gives us the number of negative zeros. 
of course, would be less than by an even numbers. So we subtract two, subtract two again, and keep doing that until we cannot do that anymore. All right. Uh, so uh, that's it for this review. Uh, we'll continue next time. Thank you for watching.